Sometimes the fast pace of operations can lead you down the rosy path of destruction, and this appears to be a classic case of just that. And unfortunately, United Airlines simply cannot get a break this week in the news. Once you get in the news cycle, you are in the barrel. This runway excursion happened just yesterday, Friday, the 8th of March. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Let's check it out. Starting with the Aviation Safety Network on Friday, the 8th of March, a 737 MAX-8, November 27290, 2019 model, no fatalities, substantial damage. United Airlines Flight 2477, a Boeing 737 MAX-8, suffered a runway excursion after landing on runway 27 at Houston's George Bush International Airport, Intercontinental Airport. ADSB data suggests that the aircraft had a ground speed of 30 knots on the runway 09 threshold, that's the far end of runway 27, when it began turning to the right towards taxiway Sierra Charlie. That's the very last taxiway at the end of the runway. It then rolled onto the grass at a ground speed of 20 knots, again, that's from preliminary ADSB data, where it came to a stop with the aircraft tilting to the left and the nose gear off the ground. Photos from the scene seem to show a collapsed left main gear. Passengers deplaned via the air stairs through the R1 exit. Weather at the time was one and a half miles in mist and 800 broken, so the, wet, the runway was wet. Here's some pictures of the aftermath from Twitter. You can see the wet concrete. There's the uh, runway behind the aircraft. This is taxiway Sierra Charlie. Looks like the left main gear is broken and looks like the aircraft is resting on the left engine and the left winglet, the sharklet, the lower portion of the winglet is in the dirt and the nose gear is off the ground. Everybody walking off in a controlled fashion off of the um, air stair out of the one right door. Not an emergency evacuation. Here we can see just how high the nose gear is off the ground and you can get an idea of some of the skid marks and torn up um, dirt and mud back behind the aircraft here. A little closer view of the damage. It's hard to tell exactly which way this left main gear leg failed, but it looks like this gear leg failed once the aircraft left the pavement and hit the dirt. So investigators will be looking very closely at the stability of the approach and the touchdown point from this preliminary ADSB data here on Flight Radar 24, it appears to me to be a stabilized approach on speed with a reasonable vertical descent rate. The touchdown point is a little hard to discern off of this data, but it's these last couple of points here that, that folks are looking at. Here's the 20 knots at the last data point in the grass, 25 knots and 30 knots. 58 knots right near the end of the runway. So they're coming in hot to the end of the runway and the recommended, the maximum recommended speed for these large jets for doing a 90 degree turn is 10 knots. Here's the runway layout at IAH and this incident occurred on runway 27, which is 10,000 feet long. Here's a close up view of the Sierra Charlie taxiway at the end of the runway. And here's the grass area where they ended up in. Our friend Victor at Vast Aviation captured the data in this video here, but he also captured a very important exchange between ATC after he published the video. And this is the operational pressure that I'm talking about. United Airlines 2477 Tower, United 2477 Tower, United 2477, go ahead. 2477, how does our spacing look? Can we roll all the way down to the end? So 2477 wants to roll all the way down to the end and, and peel off here on Sierra Charlie, presumably because this is the United Gates located right here. Then Tower says, keep your speed up, and that's approved. So there's the hook. <laughs> 
to reel you in on an operational situation that may lead you down the rosy path of destruction with a r wet runway, a lots of possible ru rubber deposits down in here, though the rubber is located here. The excursion happened here. When, the, when you get these jets turning 90 degrees at greater than 10 knots, they tend to understeer. So you'll start turning the tiller and the thing will just plow straight ahead. It'll just plow right off of the nose gear instead of turning and take you right off into the grass. So United asks, how does our spacing look? Can we roll all the way down to the end? He's talking about the spacing of the aircraft behind him because there's a guy coming in right behind him going to land. He needs to get clear of the runway. And the tower says, keep your speed up. And that's approved. And United says, OK, we'll do. And they were clipping along at about 30 knots and looks like potentially 20 knots in the turn there. They'll be able to get those numbers figured out exactly uh, in the report. Their hearing will improve at the hearing. United 2477 right at Sierra Charlie. Contact the ramp. Good day. And here's the rest of the audio. Seven right at Sierra Charlie. Contact the ramp. Good day. Weekend. They did not have a good weekend. 2477, uh, correction to United 1383. Go around. So right away, that's the aircraft that was following closely behind him. Send him around. At a thirteen eighty three, we're going around runway uh, two seven. And twenty four seventy seven, I see in the grass rolling the uh, trucks en route. Twenty four seventy seven. And thirteen eighty three, five runway heading, maintain uh, two thousand. Okay, United thirteen eighty three, go say again. Thirteen eighty three, five runway heading, maintain two thousand. Fly the runway heading, maintain two thousand at thirteen eighty three. And thirteen eighty three, turn right heading three six zero. Stand by one sec, sir. So get, they get that aircraft turned one around. Left. We've got an aircraft uh, off the runway on 27. Be just a minute on the 15. 2477 tower. Section anything that would indicate uh, something uh, is wrong back there. At 1383, turn right, heading 360 immediately. At 1383, and uh, we're level at 2000 now. 1383, climb, maintain 3000. Maintain 3000 at 1383. Go with 5276, uh, go around, track the localizer, climb and maintain 2000. All right, go around, uh, track the localizer, be 2000. Go with 5276. They're sending the second aircraft around, and the bleep bleep sounds is the uh, autopilot disconnecting. Reduce the level of automation to meet the situation. But there's one more interesting ex exchange on the radio here that I want to point out. Uh, 2477, did you copy that? Uh, they, they requested you shut down the uh, engine on the left side. United 2477. United 2477, we got. Let's go, 5276, turn right heading 360. Okay, so were they so startled when they slipped off into the grass there that they did not immediately shut down the engines? Probably a lot of that skid marks that you see behind the aircraft is grass and dirt thrown up by the left engine still running after they hit the dirt. And it sounds like they left it running for a little bit of time there, so long so that the emergency crews noticed it notified the tower and the tower notified the crew so some of the passenger testimony on the news varied uh, regarding the landing some said it felt like a normal landing others felt like he came in fast um, but the data will bear that out so investigators will have a pretty good idea pretty quickly after they talk to the crew about this incident be able to quickly review the data recorder to see to ensure that there was nothing wrong with the aircraft that could have possibly caused this incident. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. It's hard to keep up.